if you can psychoanalyze Jack Dorsey for a second. So he's one of the early adopters, or he's one of the people pushing the early adoption in this layer three, so in, inside Cash App. What do you make of the man uh, of this decision as a business owner, as somebody playing in the space? Like what, um, why did he do it? And what does that mean for others at the scale that might be doing the same? So incorporating Lightning Network and incorporating Bitcoin into their products. I think he's been pretty clear about this. He feels that Bitcoin is an instrument of economic empowerment for billions of people that are unbanked and have no property rights in the world. If you want to give a, an incorruptible bank to 8 billion people on the planet, that's the same as asking the question, how do you give a full education through PhD to 8 billion people on the planet? And the answer is a, a, a digital version of the 20th century thing running on a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And Bitcoin is a bank in cyberspace. It's run by incorruptible software, and it's for everybody on Earth. So I think when Jack looks at it, he's very sensitive to the plight of everybody in Africa. If you look at Africans, right, like you're going to give them banks. You're not going to put a bank branch on every corner. That's an obscene waste of energy. Mm -hmm. You're not going to run copper wires across the continent. That's an obscene waste of energy. You're not going to give them gold. And, you know, so, so how are you going to provide people with a decent life? The, the metaphor, I think, is, is relevant here. The biological metaphor, Lex, is uh, type 1 diabetic. Uh, if you're a type 1 diabetic, you can't form fat. And if you can't form fat, then you can't store excess energy. So that means that, I mean, fat is the ultimate organic battery. And if you've got 30 pounds of it, you can go 60 days without eating. But if you can't generate insulin, you can't form fat cells. And if you can't form fat cells and store energy, then you can eat yourself to death. I mean, you will eat and you will die. You'll starve to death. So the lack of property rights is like being a type 1 diabetic. And so if you look at most people everywhere in the world, they don't have property rights, they don't have effective bank, and they don't and their currency is broken. Like what are the, what are the two things that in theory would serve as the equivalent of a uh, of a an organic battery or an economic battery to civilization it would be I have a currency which holds its value and I can store it in a bank. So a, a risk, a risk free currency derivative. I yeah, I pay you your money, you take your life savings, you put it in a bank, you save up for your retirement, you'll live happily ever after. That's the American dream, right? That's the idyllic situation. The real situation is there are no banks, you can't get a bank account. So I give you your pay in currency, and then I double the supply and I give it to my cousin, or I give it to whatever cause I want, or I use it to buy weapons, and then you find a loaf of bread costs triple next month is what it costs, and your life savings is worthless. And so in that environment, everybody's ripped back to Stone Age barter. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that, even Stone Age barter is... You're going to carry your life savings on your back. And what happens when the guy with a machine gun points it at your head and just takes your life savings? So, so I think from Jack's point of view, he thinks that life is, this is maybe too strong, but I, these are my words, life is hopeless for a lot of people. And Bitcoin is hope, right? Because, because it, it gives everyone um, an engineered monetary asset that's a bearer instrument and it gives them a bank on their mobile phone and they they don't have to trust their government or another counterparty with their life force mm -hmm. so I, I there's a secondary thing i think he's in, interested in which is the, the first thing is the human rights issue and the second thing would be the friction to, to trade cross borders is so great, right? Like, yeah. Like, uh, I, I, you know, you like AI. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a beautiful notion. 
maybe one day there'll be an artificially intelligent creature in cyberspace that is self-sufficient and rich. Like they, it would have so sovereignty. You mean can can a robot own money or property? How about can a Tesla car? Can I actually put enough enough money in a car for it to drive itself and maintain itself forever? Or can I create a, an artificially intelligent creature in cyberspace that is endowed, mm -hmm. such that it would live a thousand years and continue to do its job? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a word for that in the real world is institution, Harvard, mm -hmm. Cambridge, Stanford, right? There are institutions with endowments that go on in perpetuity. But what if I wanted to perpetuate um, a, a software program? And um, with, uh, with something like digital property, with Bitcoin and Lightning, you could do it. And on the other hand, with uh, banks and credit cards, you couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't ever. So, so you can create things that are beautiful and lasting. Uh, and uh, wh what's the difference in speed? Well, it's a, so I can either trade with everybody in the world at the speed of light, friction-free in 24 hours writing a Python script, or I can spend a hundred billion dollars to trade with a few million people in the world after it takes them six months of application. The impedance is like a 10 million to one difference, mm -hmm. right? And the metaphors are literally like launching something in orbit versus almost orbit or vacuum sealing something. Does it last forever and does it orbit forever or does it go up and come down and burn up? Right, and I think Jack is interested in, you know, uh, uh, putting freedom in orbit. Right, I mean, <laughs> putting freedom, putting freedom in orbit, and and he said it many times. He said, "This is the the, the internet needs a native currency." Yeah, right, and yeah. and no political construct or security can be a native currency. You need a property, and you need a property that can be moved a million times a second. Can you oscillate it at 10 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz? And the answer is only if it's a pure digital construct, mm -hmm. permissionless and open. And so I think he, that he's enthusiastic as the technologist and he's enthusiastic as the humanitarian. And what he's doing is uh, to support both those areas. He's supporting the Bitcoin and the Lightning protocol by building them into his products, but he's also building the applications which you need at the Cash App level in order to commercialize and deliver the functionality and the compliance necessary, and they're related. And I should also say, he's just a fascinating person. I, for a random reason that I couldn't even explain if I tried, I met him a few days ago and gave him a great big hug in the middle of nowhere. There was no explanation. He just appeared. That's a fascinating human. His uh, relationship with art, with the world, with human suffering, with technology is fascinating. Um, I, don't, I don't know what his path looks like, but it's interesting that people like that exist. Um, and in part, I'm saddened that he no longer is involved with Twitter uh, directly as a CEO because I was hoping something inside Twitter would also integrate some of these ideas of uh, what you're calling digital energy um, to see how social networks, something I'm really interested in and passionate about could be transformed.